kind of love technology, that's all I can say. I'm glad you guys made it today in this uh, wonderful weather that we are having. And uh, some, of course, can't, couldn't make it into town, but that's okay. Um, we have a guest speaker this morning, Pastor Rod Brown from uh, First Baptist Church in Portage the Prairie. And uh, we want to welcome him here today. And he's going to come in a minute and share. Uh, we're just going to open in a word of prayer before he comes to the Bible. Lord, we thank you for another day, uh, even in the midst of uh, weird weather and, and all the things that are happening in our world around us, uh, we know that you are still in control. And, uh, and so, Lord, we just ask that you would uh, be with us this morning as we spend this time together. And uh, we hear from your word and, and uh, we pray together. And we just have uh, a devotional time together. That's what uh, this is all about, just coming together. Uh, meeting uh, with you, hearing what you have to say, and uh, just allowing you to work in our lives and, and all the things that we are doing. And so, Lord, we just invite you. We prepare our hearts and we prepare our minds, and uh, we ask that you would um, just uh, help us uh, to uh, focus in, uh, even with all the distractions and everything going on, Lord, that we would just spend some time with you this morning. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm going to ask Rod to come. And when Rod, when you're done, Rod, I'll just uh, close. And uh, and then we also invite you to stay afterwards for coffee and that as well uh, in the cafe. Well, thank you, Robert. I, it's a privilege to be here. And... Uh, I just want to share with you a little bit about what God is doing in my heart. Um, this week has been an interesting week. I don't know if this ever happens to you, but uh, <clears throat> this week I I did something that hasn't happened in a long, long time, in that I studied myself into a place where I realized that I've actually been preaching the wrong message. And uh, I, I was shocked. But as I started working my way through that, and just understanding the subtle ways that I've been preaching a wrong message, it's it's kind of turned my week upside down. And uh, <clears throat> I want to read you a few verses. What's happening is that we're, in our church, we're working through kind of a chronological series of working our way through the Bible. And uh, as we've been going through that, we're up to a point now where we're talking about John the Baptist as he came and started um, telling the news that the Deliverer, the Messiah, was going to be coming. And it says in Matthew chapter 3, it says, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is the one referred to by Isaiah the prophet when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Make ready the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And that message of repentance is a message that is really absolutely countercultural in our in our Western society, in our Western culture, as we look at the things that are happening all around us, the message of repentance is not a message that wants to be heard. And it's not a new thing that it is like that. When I was a young man, <clears throat> I had uh, we had been involved, my wife and I were working in a church in southern Manitoba here, and we were, I was a youth pastor at the time, and there was a whole bunch of events that kind of came together at the same time, and, uh, and we resigned from that position, and working through some of the things that were happening in our life, um, we resigned that position, we left the church, and, uh, and in, a, in a very kind of broken state, we started attending a new church, and they picked us up and kind of carried us for a long time. But the thing that was happening in my life at that point was that God was teaching me that what needed to happen in my life is a repentant spirit, where I walked away from my agenda and my wants and my desires and what I thought was my rights and my, you know how we go there? I'm right and you're wrong, so you obviously need to change. <laughs> and God was teaching me that that is not the issue. 
the issue, even if I am right, is that God wants to develop in me a repentant spirit. And what is repentance, the biblical term for repentance, really literally and, and simply just means that, that I turn away from sin and I turn towards God. I stop pursuing one thing, I start pursuing another thing, and that, that change of heart, literally what it means is a change of heart that results in a change of direction. That's repentance. And I was teaching that, I've been teaching that message for years. Teaching that in order for us to be saved, there has to be repentance. And what repentance looks like is that I'm walking this way in my life, and I stop, I quit pursuing sin, I make a 180 degree turn, and I begin to walk in a new direction, and I begin to pursue God. That's the picture of repentance. But what God taught me this week is that my understanding of repentance is that I need to stop pursuing sin and I need to start pursuing God. And what God showed me through a bunch of things is that that's the wrong message. That is a gospel of works. I can't change my ways. There's a verse in the Old Testament that asks the question, can a leopard change its spots? <laughs> when God is talking to Job, he says, can a leopard change its spots? No, he can't. And I can't drum up within myself a spirit of repentance, but I've always understood it kind of in my thinking that in order for God to accept and give me salvation, I needed to stop pursuing sin and start pursuing righteousness. I went to a verse, or God kind of, as he was working me through this, he took me to a verse in, the, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. It says, For it is God who is at work within you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. I don't have the ability within myself to create a spirit of repentance, but God does. It says in another verse that it's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. Even the change, the desire to want to pursue God in my life is something that is given to me by the Holy Spirit. And there's kind of, as we, we, get, we get into these big theological debates about whether I am the one who is supposed to be doing things or God is supposed to be doing things because God is all powerful and he's all knowing and he's all, he's, uh, he's everywhere at the same time. We talk about all those things and God is the one who does that. But then at the same time, we talk about the fact that we have a free will and I get to choose. It's up to me to choose salvation. But the Bible, the Bible says that if we are to choose between one of the two, is, is God all-powerful? Is he the one who does it? And we ask the other question, am I the one who does it? Am I the one who turns from my sin? The answer is yes. <laughs> Both are true. And somehow there's a mystery kind of that's involved in my life where God is working to create in me a desire to move away from sin. But at the same time, God says, you have to choose. And, and it's kind of a strange message. But when John was talking to the, the, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and some of the scribes that were coming to, to the river Jordan when, where he was baptizing, that passage where we read it beginning in Matthew chapter 3, he actually turns to the Pharisees and he says, you brood of vipers. Like, he's not a nice guy. <laughs> He calls them out, and he says, you need to bring forth fruit that is in keeping with repentance. And what he's, what he's saying is that if God is creating in me a spirit of repentance, and I allow him to continue to work so that that desire 
He creates in me the desire to move away from sin and towards him. And then he gives me the strength and the ability to move towards him and away from sin. If my answer towards him is just constantly, yes, Lord, I'll obey. I will keep on doing what you call me to. God is at work within my life to give me the desire and to enable me to move away from sin and move towards righteousness. That is the picture of repentance. And genuine repentance actually results in a genuinely changed life. I feel bad about lots of stuff. I, I, I regret things that I've done. There is sorrow over things that have happened, but that's not repentance. That's feeling bad. That's just guilt. And guilt is not the same as repentance. The fruit of guilt is shame and fear and isolation. The fruit of repentance is moving away from sin, moving towards God. And ultimately, the fruit of repentance is freedom. Because as God gives me that gift, and I respond to that gift, and I move forward in my life, God grants me salvation, and he grants me the ability and the strength through the Holy Spirit to move away from sin. And I become a different person than I was two days ago, or five years ago, or 30 years ago. I'm a different man today. And part of that, as I'm working through this whole thing that God is trying to teach me, my, I, I come from a long line of Browns. <laughs> and Browns, we, we are kind of characterized by being pretty thick-headed. And it takes a little bit to teach us a new thing. And so sometimes we get two by fours, and sometimes we get that kind of thing. So it's, it's tough to change. But God does that. And so today, I'm a new man. I'm a different person than I was 30 years ago. Am I perfect? No, I'm not. But I am a whole lot closer to the perfection and the holiness and the righteousness that I am in Jesus. I'm a whole lot closer in my walk today than I was five years ago and 10 years ago. Because as I respond and God creates in me a spirit of repentance, he changes my heart. And when my heart changes, my actions change. And that truth in our culture today is desperately, desperately needing to be heard. When we, when we left that church, and I was talking about that church that kind of carried us for a while, we had a small group leader who as I was talking about repentance, he finally, he got upset with me one day. And he told me, Rod, you need to stop talking about repentance. You've done that. You've repented. You're saved. You need to stop talking about that, and you need to just move forward. But I don't find anywhere in my Bible that repentance is supposed to stop. But that is a message that is subtly being held on to in our church. We don't need to, you don't need to focus on sin. You don't need to focus on all that stuff. And as we reinterpret our Bible, and as we start looking at our Bible in light of the times that we live in, we've got all kinds of strange doctrines and messages that are starting to be, especially in our North American church, the all kinds of strange teachings that are starting to be taught not starting, maybe it's been happening for a long time. But into all those messages, <laughs> the message of repentance is not welcome. Because repentance means that I stop focusing on me and I start focusing on God. My agenda gets left behind and I take this word and I accept it for what it is. And when there's a conflict between me and this word, a repentant spirit says, I will walk away from me, and I will walk towards God, and I will pursue what God is saying here. He's right. And no matter what it looks like around me, he is right. And any other message is wrong. I don't know where you come from as far as your background and what church you're going to and what the message is being preached, but the message of repentance is absolutely crucial for 2023. 
I believe that we're going to see the rapture pretty soon. That may be open to a whole new can of words as far as what people believe. But I believe Jesus is coming back soon as we watch what's happening on a worldwide basis. I believe that we are right in that day. And it's going to happen. And Jesus, it says that he is busy preparing a bride for himself that is spotless, that is perfect, that is without blemish. And he's coming back to take that bride to be with him. And Satan is doing everything that he can in his rebellion and his anger and his wrath. In his rage, he is doing everything that he can do to destroy the church, to destroy you and I as Christian people who name the name of Jesus. He hates us. That's who he is. <laughs> he hates everything that smacks of godliness because he's a liar. He's a proud spirit. That got kicked out of heaven because of pride. And as a result of his pride, he wants to destroy everything about God, including you and me. His agenda is to steal and kill and destroy. And into that, God says, I'm calling you to move away from the pride that is in your heart. That's who we are. Without Jesus, without salvation, we fall under that kingdom. We were born in sin. We were born with proud hearts. And God says, I call on you to repent. And if you will allow me, I will build in you a spirit of repentance that doesn't want to pursue sin. And it causes me to change. Because there's a part of me, even though I love the Lord, there's a part of that old man, that old nature that is in us, there's a part of that old nature that still kind of winks at sin. It still kind of wants to go there. And the more I submit to God, the more he creates in me a spirit that is like his spirit, the more he makes me more and more like him, and I and I don't want to pursue sin. Because he's changing me. And I want to pursue him, which takes me away from sin. And all through all through scripture, we hear that message. Turn away from sin, turn towards God. Forsaking everything that we've left behind, pursuing what is laid before me. That's the message of repentance. It's all through scripture from beginning to end. And in our culture, all of a sudden we have a great revelation that we don't need to do that. But look at our North American church. We are bearing the fruit of our choices. But God is not done yet. And not every church is going that direction. My brother-in-law is looking for a new church to attend. He's having a desperately hard time. And because it's, it's hard to find a church that is willing to just stand up and preach the word. But they're there because God is not done. He is not finished. He has not given up. Satan is not winning. The battle has been won. It's a decisive victory. And we, as the body of Christ, need to continue to live out our pursuit of him. And as we do that, he will continue to build his church through us. So as people come into your life today, we don't have to convert them. <laughs> we need to be faithful to share the message. And the Holy Spirit will speak to them just the way he speaks to us. And where there is sin in their lives, where there are things that are wrong, where there are things that grieve him, the Holy Spirit will address that. Just as he has this week in my life, the Holy Spirit will continue to work through you and me to build the church that he said he was going to build. To build the bride he's coming back for. There is one day, and I believe it's soon, when I am going to sit at the Last Supper. Jesus said when he, when he instituted communion and he instituted all those things at the Last Supper, he said, I'm not going to eat this again until I eat it in the kingdom of heaven. When the bride comes and joins with the groom and we sit down at the table and we feast together, I can't wait for that day. I get to have supper with Jesus. 
Amen? Amen. That is going to be a day. And in the meantime, he calls us to walk away from sin, to pursue him, and in that context, he will use us to build the church. In Port of Prairie, in Manitoba, in Canada, in Kenya, in Nairobi, in all over the world, he is building his church. He's not done yet. And we get to be part of that. and I had the privilege of, of uh, traveling a few weeks ago to Barbados where we attended a conference uh, with other pastors and leaders from around the world and uh, it was just an incredible time of being away uh, from uh, not just the cold of Canada but and, and being in the warmth, but also just being away from the routines of life and all the things that we're doing. How many know that as we work, as we labor, and we go through life, uh, um, our hearts get weighed down, and our hearts get even what we could call hardened, um, and, and they become heavy and hardened, and, and, and it's so easy for us to kind of get into this, uh, get into ruts. And sometimes even we become like machines. We function like a machine. We just go through the motions and the routines and, and we work hard and we, and we pour ourselves out and we do our jobs and we serve our families. And, uh, and, uh, and, and what happens over time is, is we kind of lose touch with, uh, we lose touch with the Lord, with God, our, our relationship with the Lord. We even lose touch with our relationships with others around us. And, um, God wants to touch and change our hearts. And as Rod was talking about repentance, I was thinking about that. Uh, repentance is just simply uh, shifting and changing our, 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 um, our direction in our lives. And, and our, not only that, but in how we look at things, how we feel things, our emotions are touched. And, and we change our emotions, we change our thoughts, how we think about things. And that's what repentance is about. When we get into these ruts and we get stuck, uh, then God wants to take us out of that rut and out of the, those things that are holding us back or, or weighing us down or uh, the sins that we get stuck and caught into and uh, the bad habits and all these things. And uh, God wants to do a work in our heart. And when we were away, I felt that God really did a work in my heart. Um, and one of the things that God spoke to me is, uh, and, and the prayer that I had is, God, change my heart. You know, we used to sing a song called, Change My Heart, O Lord, Make It Ever True. And uh, God wants to do that work. There's a scripture in Ezekiel that talks about the, the God changing our hearts and making them, instead of a heart of stone, you know how, how we can get into, into, into the rut of feeling hardened in our hearts and not caring and not feeling... And God can change our hearts from stone and make them soft and tender again. And that process sometimes is a painful process. Mm -hmm. uh, we associate repentance with, with uh, emotions that come, tears, breaking, crying. Uh, and as men, we don't like to talk about all that stuff because it's, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy for me to cry. It's not easy for me to break. Uh, and sometimes our lives are, are, are shattered in that way and God is just working on us and he's changing us and he's softening our hearts. He's making our hearts tender. Uh, when uh, when uh, King David, when David was chosen as the king of Israel because Saul, uh, the first king of Israel, um, basically decided that he wanted to do things his way and God wasn't happy with him. And uh, God said, I'm going to uh, choose a new king and he chose uh, David as king because David had a heart. The Bible says that he had a heart after God. He had a heart that was after God. He had a heart that was tender towards God. He had a heart that would hear what God had to say. And, um, and then he would obey and he would do what God wanted him to do. And uh, really, that's what it's all about. God wants to change our hearts so that we align ourselves with Him and, and hear Him and come into uh, tune with Him and His voice. 
and then we're able to uh, obey and do what he wants to do. And that's really the fear of the Lord, which is a whole other topic, but we won't get into that. But God wants us to fear him and respect him. And what Rod was saying about the state of our churches today, really a lot of that is associated with the fact that we, we don't have the fear of the Lord. We don't have a, a deep respect and honor. And uh, in fact, the Bible says to work out your salvation with what? With fear and even trembling. Um, because of the because of the the, the, the weightiness and the seriousness of, of uh, our salvation, our eternal salvation, and uh, so if you're listening today online or uh, on this recording at a later date, um, God is calling out to you. He's wanting to reach you. He's wanting to touch your life. He's wanting to change your heart. He's wanting to draw you nearer. Uh, we can come. The Bible says we can come close to God. We can actually. Uh, even come into his presence and into his throne room because of what Christ has done for us. Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, has saved us. He has redeemed us uh, by his death on the cross. Uh, he has paid for the penalty of our sin and for the hardness of our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, we can come before our Father. And uh, the Bible says that we can come boldly. We can come before him. We can pray. We can uh, make our requests known to him that he hears our prayers and that he wants to answer our prayers. And so as we close this morning our devotional time, uh, let's just spend a moment in prayer. Let's spend a moment going before the Lord, going before our Father in heaven. And the Bible says, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And so as we approach uh, our Father this morning, let's just pray that His will is done in our lives today. And, um, and of course, we're, we're coming, we're, we're, we're meeting together at GME Drift Emporium, and we're praying that God's will will be done in this place today uh, as we uh, go through this day serving, working, volunteering, and uh, working uh, to do the work uh, of this uh, mission and ministry. Uh, we just pray that uh, God's will will be done. Heavenly Father, we thank you again uh, for this new day. We thank you for the words that uh, were shared this morning and uh, how you are, uh, you are changing our hearts and our lives. Uh, even in the midst of the things that are happening in our world today, you are still the same God today as you were yesterday. And you will be the same God tomorrow. And forever and so Lord we thank you that we have that hope that our faith rests upon a rock that is sound and strong and and sustains us and so Lord this morning as we come before you Lord we ask first of all that if there's anything that needs to change in our lives that you will you will help uh, change that you will do that work Lord not that it would be an act of, of religious service and duty but Lord it would be a deep work of your spirit a deep work of your hand uh, in our lives, a deep work of your presence uh, moving in, in our lives and changing our hearts. And Lord, if there is anyone that is struggling this morning with a heart that has been hardened, a heart that is heavy and hardened, uh, Lord, we pray that you will do the work of softening. You will do the work of drawing that heart back to you and uh, closer to you. Uh, and Lord, we thank you for the uh, promises that we have in your word, that you will never leave us, you will never forsake us, uh, that you are there all the time, that we can cry out to you wherever we are, if we're at home, at work, uh, in our cars, uh, wherever we are, we can cry out to you and that you will hear our cry. You will not uh, forsake us, Lord. And so Lord, for each one this morning, uh, here in this place or uh, online or, or watching at a later date. Um, Lord, I just pray that uh, we would have the courage to cry out to you and to uh, and to uh, pour our hearts out before you as it were. And Lord, you will hear. And we thank you for that. I pray your blessing upon this day today and uh, all that is being done. I thank you and I pray for your blessing upon Rod his ministry here in Portage La Prairie at First Baptist Church. Uh, Lord, that you will continue to uh, pour out upon him and the work that he's doing there and all the work that is happening in this uh, assembly, in this church, this, this family. 
this, this spiritual family. Lord, I just pray that you will continue to uh, bless them, multiply them, and grow this work in ministry in quarters with her. We just thank you, we praise you, and we give you the glory this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.